So just a little bit about ourselves. Um, we come from a background, a mixed-use developer. Um, we focus on city centre locations, building about 800 homes, brownfield sites, city centre locations in Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, we focus particularly on um, qualitative um, development with quite a bit of external space. Um, I said it's in urban locations, so relatively high density and also very low, low carbon. The one in Gestolfin, um, which we got a consent for um, just before Christmas. And the one in Gestolfin is actually quite interesting because there um, we're switching all our new home housing to uh, no fossil fuels. We um, are now installing sprinklers on all our homes um, and because they're all flatty development. Um, and that actually gives us a few more opportunities for things like bigger windows. Um, we've beefed up insulation and we work from a sort of background of less first, you know, more, more fabric, more in the fabric, um, more daylight. Um, and that creates more um, energy within the home itself. We then capture that energy, um, push it through a heat pump, um, and that gives us additional energy in a way in terms of heat and hot waters. If anything good comes out of COVID, I think it will make us think about the quality of our homes, working more from home, um, the way we travel. I think people will walk more. I think they'll cycle more because it's something they've got used to in lockdown. Um, and I think the quality of external space, you know, be it on the balcony, be it on the roof, be it in a terrace or be it in a common garden, but I think you know, external space is going to become quite a premium, particularly in city centre urban housing, which is really what we, we focus on. So I would hope by doing this, um, you know, we'll, we'll be ahead of the curve and therefore, you know, that's making us give us a com competitive market edge um, and we will continue to drive it that way. One of the biggest ways of producing new homes and reducing the carbon footprint is to reduce the daily commute. So looking at city centres where it's a place to work, rest and play um, and live. Um, so I think getting housing back in the city centres is, is a key key thing and that's really where, where, where we're driving it from. That does produce some challenges around looking at higher density housing. Does that necessarily mean higher, bigger? Um, so you've got to be very conscious of the quality of design issues as well, but you've really got to maximise those opportunities that are close to strong transport hubs where you can get new homes for people in strong, sustainable locations. I think the other challenge is, you know, delivering, you know, lower carbon housing that most people think, well, actually carries a bigger cost, a bigger capital cost. And how do we translate that into perceived value? Because it's unlikely that a buyer will actually pay you more for a lower carbon house than, than one before. So what do we start to consider when we were delivering lower carbon housing? Um, well, we came from a basis of, first of all, less is best. You know, let's look at you know, water reduction. Let's look at more fabric, bigger windows, more lights. Um, you know, use nature as much as we can. If we can use less in the first place, then we don't need so much much power. Um, our overall our other objective is to drive out fossil fuel, um, which is you know, is a key to it. Part of that insulation of fabrics also made us look at how we use roof space, green roofs. Once again, um, you know, it, it, it can be very much part of that well-being within the development. It's, it's a great ecology opportunity of green roof as well as doing um, a, a very good thing on insulation and surface water reduction. Obviously, new housing represents a small amount of the total housing stock, but it is an area that we can influence. I think the second point I'd like to make is that encouraging city centre living is a key thing, and Glasgow is a, a classic case of that, actually. There's a really good opportunity there. Otherwise, um, I would strongly suggest that rather than just regulate, we demonstrate the added value, we demonstrate saleability, we help incentive buyers, incentivise buyers to um, consider lower carbon homes first before other homes. Um, so I think it's about 
not only addressing the industry, but also actually really addressing the public and making sure that you know, a lower carbon home does offer better long-term value and a healthier home. Finally, a suggestion, if I may, um, something for Scotland to perhaps consider, and certainly it's something as our sound we're beginning to do, is look at a kite mark benchmark system that could be rolled out that measures all aspects of sustainability, such as you know, well-being, waste management, water reduction, energy, sustainable construction materials, transport, land use. And what that basically does is give you a, a graph, a, a picture that shows you just how sustainable, how low carbon um, is your the home that you're considering buying. If we were able to turn that into something such as a kite mark that could help buying public um, drive up the low carbon agenda in housing, then maybe the industry would respond quicker. So there's a suggestion, there's a thought. Thank you and goodbye from Clive Wilding at Arthstone.